Welcome back to Tearing Saga. We are on our way to the final battle now, and we are back to Holmes' party for this map. So it feels like it's been ages since we last saw them, since Rune's maps were pretty involved. It's uh, pretty much the same as we left them. But it, we are still indoors, and we've still got quite a few mages to deal with, as well as a lot of monsters. Now, I believe, and I say I believe, because I've never actually done this, the Holmes version of this event, but if you did the Kate event on Holmes' route, then Kate will actually be here in the middle of all of these bone walkers, and you'll have to rescue her. But yeah, as you can see, this map is a dark maze of corridors and doors, but if you press the select button, you can see all of the passageways. The objective here is to defeat the boss, who is yet another um, palette swapped um, dark bishop, and then have Holmes stand in front of the door at the end of the map. It's a little confusing, but it'll make sense once we get there. Also, Carla's on the map now. Her stats are fairly high overall, and she has Meteor and Earthquake, so no way of actually countering at close range. But she also has the Dragon Scoot, which halves damage received. That is ignored by Holmes and Rudin's uh, legendary swords, though. And she has Nile too, and she can walk like all witches. Uh, but I'll just say, we don't have to deal with her on this map. So other than that, we have uh, Draco zombies, and we have uh, enemies with... There's a lot of death here. Swarm, more death, more death. Uh, some random cultists here, a few of them have pylums. Uh, Nosferatu, like, like, yeah, overall it's really not actually that bad of a map, but uh, hopefully I don't speak too soon. So, in this map, uh, again, another thing they don't tell you about in the preparation screen, we'll be split into two groups, one of them in the north and one in the south, and checking my notes, numbers 3, 4, 6, 7, and 10 go in the north group. Oh, this is our first chance to check uh, Agni Astra's attack. So yes, halves breath damage and it pierces dragon scales. 20 crit and 17 might as well, uh, and actually not that bad 5 weight too, so pretty good weapon overall. Uh, anyway, I think we should, uh, in fact, thinking about it, I hope, maybe I don't even need the Brave Sword on Holmes anymore, especially since this is going to double most things. Is there anyone else who could really use that? Also, I could take an Arbalest on him. Ugh, Yoda maybe? It gives him a lot of chances to activate his skills. Anyway, let's go! This is gonna be our lower group. And we're not even seeing the upper group move in. Oh, Shigen, you clearly haven't seen the map. Yeah, true, it would be kind of strange for you to not run into any cultists at this point. You can see the literal light at the end of the tunnel behind this guy, through those bars. Ah oh yes, the um... <laughs> the famous last request to any generic boss. You can finish them yourself, they shouldn't be a problem. But let's see who's up the top path. Yeah, everyone here is, uh... Oh yeah, something that is actually very, very helpful here too. You will need door keys. I would recommend a few of these because homes can't be everywhere at once. And the top group especially needs, uh, needs door keys. So whoever's in the top group in this case, uh, they need at least one door key. I'm gonna give one, I think I'll actually give two just in case to, uh, San. Hopefully I don't use up all of them in this map because I need some of them left over for the final chapter. Anyway, let's battle. 
Okay, so I guess we'll start with the top group, because, like I said, they're the one that needs the door key. They can't really do much of anything without opening this door. So let's go ahead and unlock that. And now they can get into this corridor, where they'll have to deal with a death mage as well as a draco zombie. So I guess everyone should go after whatever they can get closest to. So only you can attack that draco zombie, but you're not going to one-round it, so... Yeah, not sure, and... Oh, right, uh, Yoda ended up going in the top group rather than the bottom. They can always just pull more door keys out of um, Holmes' inventory. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to use Xeno here because I know that he will definitely one round this Draco Zombie. This map is also very, very easily warp skip with Renee. But I'm not going to do that because I just think it's more interesting to just play the map some, you know, quote unquote, the way they were meant to be played. Yeah, always make sure you check the enemy's ranges. That actually is a good way to uh, basically check the... the um, the corridors, basically, like where they are. Now, if I flurry with a brave crossbow, yeah, that will definitely take you. I mean, I mean, the, the two shots on the brave crossbow would do it anyway. But I'm just doing this for safety. Hopefully, if this doesn't do it, then uh, flurry will be very unsafe. But it did it. Okay, good. Okay, so you're down. And then I guess it's really not much uh, way I can stop that guy from shooting someone who can't counter, unfortunately. Also, again, gotta remember about these mages. Some of them have swarm, so uh, beware of that. They can kind of shoot you over the wall. And yeah, this guy here, I kind of like to try and, uh, on like the second turn, when he can use Kassar's Wrath, lure, like, lure him down here with somebody so that then Holmes can pick him off with the um, Blessed Bow. And Holmes needs to shoot this guy, though, too, so that's going to be a bit annoying. But before that, I'm going to go over here, tomahawk this guy with Samson. Then this way, if anything tries to attack Samson over the wall, he'll be able to counter. The enemies here are pretty weak, and we're very strong by this point, so it really shouldn't be that bad of a chapter, but still, keep your guard up. The Draco Zombies can sometimes be a problem if you're not careful. And also, just, you know... Be careful of death and things like that, critting you. Yeah, so if you go there, you will be able to lure and attack that guy over the wall. But I kind of want to get Bilford over here because um, I want to lure this Harpy into dying on the enemy phase. Because it can go... Okay, yeah, it can... If I keep Lionheart there, it'll be able to attack him, and then I might have Lionheart pull some keys out of the convoy. Because I, yeah, I actually intended to have Yoda go in the bottom route, but um, the stupid deployment thing in uh, this game, it will have to rear its head one last time. And yeah, Holmes doesn't even need the, um, you know, halving breath damage effect. He does a good enough job as is. Of, you know, because he doesn't get hit in general. Okay, so let's go trade, uh, not actually trade, I need to trade with the convoy. And then go into the items inventory and take, uh... I might end up needing more than one as I go through this map. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. If we, if we check, um, conditions here... It says defeat boss, but there's actually another step to it. You have to beat the boss and then you have to stand on the gateway to the, uh... Well, what appears to be the outside. Well, we'll see what that's a gateway to once we get there. But if you kill the boss over the wall and then warp homes up there, you can then quite easily uh, complete this chapter quickly. And honestly, I mean, I'd probably recommend that. It's not a particularly eventful chapter or anything like that. Also, yeah, these guys here have uh, Dark Thunder and Ifrit. I don't think we've really seen Ifrit before, outside of maybe random chess rewards. But Ifrit is basically the, um, the um, uh, Dark Thunder of uh, Fire Magic. Meanwhile, Alicia... Uh... Harpies can still crit, though. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be a little careful with Alicia here. Okay, let's see what the enemy does in their first turn. This map is definitely a lot, uh, a little bit more complicated if you, um, if you have Kate here, because then you're gonna have to go and, and get her. Hi there, Dark Mage. Don't crit me with death, please. I should have paid more attention. Okay, well, there was no critical sound. 
And Zachariah is pretty fast for an armor, so he's probably not going to get doubled. But I think you were the only major threat in that general vicinity, and I can have Leonie Brave Crossbow you after this. Yeah, just a couple of those guys. And that was what I was hoping you would do. And you don't have a crit rate, which is good, because I think you're within support range of Renee. And one shot. I was about to uh, wonder whether I double or not, but it turned out it didn't even matter. I was just thinking you know, that the like like the strikes nine tiles description for um, those area spells. It makes them sound like they have a bigger area than they actually do. Uh, it actually hits in a uh, in just a square shape. Because nine tiles in a line would be quite a lot, but um. It's often kind of rare that you're bunched up like that much in a square, and yes, yeah, so there are witch reinforcements in this map. This is where Holmes having like a long range bow can help, um, but yeah, witch reinforcements. So uh, they're basically like, they're still not a huge threat, but they will pick off anybody who's sufficiently weakened. So definitely be careful of that, like for example, Lionheart might need to uh, be careful here. Okay, you actually can attack with um, with um, your long-range stuff this turn, so again, gotta be careful. But Holmes... That Nosferatu guy is not a threat unless I go in his range, so I probably don't need to have Holmes go after him specifically. And now the boss is probably gonna use um, Kissar's Wrath this turn. Oh, and if Holmes goes over here, he can actually Arbalest the Witch. Uh, which, um, doesn't kill it, because I don't double, and, um, even with my ridiculous speed stat, I don't double, and it has enough defense to not get... that's annoying. Okay, then. I do double that guy, though, I think? So I guess I can go for that. I don't... I'm not too worried about being double in return, because I still have two attack... Like, as long as we have positive attack speed, you're probably not going to get doubled by most of these enemies. Enemy attack speeds in Tearing Saga, in general, like, as always, are really, really low. The one thing that I actually am appreciating about Tearing Saga, looking at it now, is that I... I like the fact that attack speed is clearly visible. That's not the case in some of the newer games. Um, I think the attack speed is clearly displayed in um, Three Houses, but in the GBA games, you won't be able to see attack speed unless you set battle animations to... Um, uh, not battle animations, the, the combat forecast to... Um, to, like, uh, advanced, and that way you don't get to see, like, whether the enemy doubles or not in terms of the times 2 graphic, you just have to calculate that yourself. Admittedly, like in this game, but, but it, it's still, like, I still like having the times 2 there, because it, it looks cool, and it's also, um, it's also informative, but, but you can't, like, check the individual attack speeds of enemies on their status screens in the GBA games, at least I don't think. And that would be really useful in a lot of situations. Like, for example, you know, you're contemplating whether to send somebody into range of enemies because you don't know if the enemy is going to double or not. And then you uh, get to the enemy phase, and you find out you made a grave miscalculation because it turns out the enemies do double. And you, uh, you know, miscalculate... Because in the GBA games, you actually just have to look at the weapon's weight, look at their con, do the subtraction for, of the con weight, and then subtract that from their attack, from their speed stat. Like, do that all manually. It's kind of a pain. So, the corridor that Leonie is currently in is inhabited by a Draco zombie that thankfully can't attack her, which is good. But it is the one that eventually leads to the end of the map. So, we don't really need to focus too much on advancing down this path. In fact... In fact, I can probably leave Zachariah here to take on those guys. Because, yeah, I'd rather have Yoda... Well, firstly, Draco Zombie. But secondly, it's not going to hit Yoda. And I can say that with pretty much confidence. Uh, that it's not going to hit Yoda. Although, Leonie might get hit by it if, it if it goes for an area that's 30 uh, damage. And it ignores defense. So, uh, yeah, I... Okay, I need to heal her, but I also need to make sure that Lionheart doesn't die to those, uh, like, Dark Thunder. Yeah. Have to consider that. Might be a good idea to just avoid being bunched up right now. How much chance do you have of hitting Leonie? 68 and her avoid is, uh, 42. 
It's a low chance, but it's still a chance. Whereas 22, 21... I think only one of them can attack Lionheart, though. And if that's the case, then he should be fine. Oh yeah, I can also use the exercise star if I wanted to. Okay, I hope I'm making the right call here, we'll see. Because, like, again, I'm pretty sure only one of them can attack Lionheart, and he won't counter, and, and I mean, even if he does counter, he probably wouldn't kill them, so... I'm not too worried about both of them attacking him, but... Oh, there is the Witch, though. Just remember the Witch. Yeah, that's a huge pain. Because, yeah, the Witch could potentially finish him off, then. Yeah, that's, uh, an annoying factor of this map. Oh, and you have death, so probably don't want you attacking Bilford. But I also want Bilford to get uh, a little bit away from potentially uh, these guys' ranges. Because in that case, like, if I have another person who's close to that area, then Lionheart might get hit twice because of the area effect. I may have, I may have made a miscalculation with that witch here, but we'll see. Okay, going for Bilford. I don't think anything else can go for Bilford, so hopefully this is well part of the witch. But the witch is not going to kill him. Okay, going for Ifrit. I mean, Ifrit might still miss. That is cool. Like, honestly, I don't think I've ever seen the animation for Ifrit in this game. Oh boy, uh, don't let the witch kill Renee, please. Okay, you're, you're the death guy. And I have Vantage. Mm. Yeah, that could have been bad if the death guy had criticaled. But it missed anyway. I do like that death doesn't really show up as a spell until later. It is kind of intimidating to go up against a spell with this high of a crit rate. Well, at least you um, eliminated yourself on the enemy phase. That's one less thing to worry about for later. Uh, okay, that's Swarm. Holmes is... Actually, wait, no, Holmes can counter that, because he has an Arbalest. No, the Arbalest isn't quite powerful enough to one-shot things with advantage, which would be kind of kind of broken. I do really like the Arbalest overall, and, and, and having two to four range is definitely better than the double bow in Path of Radiance. Exactly four range is just very hard to set up, right? It's, it's, it's like, incredibly unlikely for that to ever really... <laughs> really do anything useful. It's like, normally a full range bow would be kind of cool, but it's full range exactly. Not two, not three, has to be four. So yeah, Arbalest is way more versatile than that. And you should get, you should get double. Because you're a cultist, you get weighed down, and your speed sucks, and Zachariah is quite fast for a general. Okay, I'm very worried about that. Okay, firstly, uh, that goes. Okay, missed all of them, so maybe I shouldn't have, um... And you just straight up attacked Holmes, instead of warping and attacking Renee. And now I do know for a fact that I don't double this, this, uh, girl. I had a feeling that was gonna hit. I mean, it does mean one more Arbalest shot will finish you off. However, uh, you have put yourself in range of Samson, so I might not even need the Arbalest. And yeah, Witches do come in every turn, so that can overwhelm you if you're not careful. And I can't even shoot at them. Like, yeah, Arbalest is the only way for me to shoot at them right now. So, here's the plan. I'm going to see if I can Blessed Bow this guy. He does have... I don't double him. I don't double him. Because he has Kassar's Wrath equipped. I almost wonder if it's more worth it to, like, use Holmes to... I'm not... Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go for this anyway, because I think I might be able to activate some skills and or critical. Oh right, you have a boss quote. I, I kind of just forgot that you were a boss, because you're just so generic. You I mean, you already kind of struck us down to the ground before, and it was actually kind of painful, but not the most painful it could be. 
And I don't really have anyone else nearby who can take that blessed bow and finish the job, because that's, uh, 14 mastery. I mean, there's no chance Lionheart has that much. Nope. Okay. Well, I can at least eliminate this witch. It's an, it's an interesting map overall, because the, the main threat is these witches that keep coming repeatedly, and the rest of the enemies being kind of positioned just right to chip you down to the point where uh, the witches can easily finish you. Now, you are a long-range weapon, so if I don't get you in melee, you're going to be annoying later. And that's you gone. Although soon we'll be able to get into this room. In fact, if I was... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, actually. Okay, firstly, I know... Okay, actually, wait a minute, no. So trade one door key to Z. Then attack. I don't need Luna, but it's almost the end of the game, so I, I don't really need to worry about conserving weapon uses. Because this is the last Holmes map before Endgame. Ironically activating that against the Draco Zombie. Because now Zeno has a door key, he's not going to reach, but can Leoni? Okay, Leoni can reach. Except that will result in her getting ganged up on by a whole ton of enemies. So maybe it's best if I don't charge in there blindly just yet. Instead I think I'll go there with Zeno. I would sort of rather Leoni be the person to open the door rather than Zeno, because I would kind of like Zeno and um, uh, Yoda to rush in. And now I can use a much, much better speed bow than the um, Brave Crossbow, because I have Flurry. I mean, normally Leoni doesn't even need a Brave Crossbow, because she flurries most things anyway for more attacks, but it can be useful to get two shots in before the enemy gets to attack, because as you've seen, she is pretty frail. Okay, so Holmes and Bilford are somewhat damaged. I've got a lot of people damaged right now, and Renee herself is also damaged. However, neither of you can use your long-range attacks this turn. So I can eliminate one of you with... Oh, speaking of Flurry, <laughs> let's use the Dire Thunder Flurry on you. So Dire Thunder Flurry... Like, I'm always wondering if it's worth it to... Um... Because Bilford can probably get into a position where nothing can attack him except maybe like one witch quite easily. Because I would sort of like Renee to be able to use that fruit to heal herself. This is where having two healers would be really useful. Yeah, Bilford can go like all the way over here and not really need to worry about too much. Let's get Shigen in there. Okay, there's an ar there well an archer monster over there. So you have, um, yeah, you have 8 resistance, so these guys do 10 damage to Ren- the witches do 10 damage to Renee, I mean. So, like, technically speaking, they actually kill her. And they could have warped, like, there, so I'm not really sure why they didn't, but I won't question it. But just in case they decide to suddenly get smart and attack her, I'm gonna do that. And I guess Lionheart can use his and Herb. I'll never get tired of calling it that. Uh, oh, and uh, Sun. Sun, uh, she can just go over there. So yeah, right now, I can't move anyone else. I do have Death, but Holmes has the Blessed Bow equipped, and he has Vantage. Uh, so they're probably going to avoid... Well, actually, here's the thing. Samson also has Vantage. Everybody that the boss can attack has Vantage. And yeah, I, I'm, I feel like he's maybe going to... I'm wondering if he's just going to run. Because often the AI doesn't attack like... Doesn't attack liking people who have vantage. No, it doesn't like attacking people who have vantage. But yeah, as you can see there, he didn't even attack. Because I'm, I'm guessing vantage scared him away from doing that. <laughs> I love the idea of Astro with a hand axe. Or Tomahawk in this case, but yeah. Or I think it's a hatchet in the Japanese version. It is sort of interesting how vantage often scares the AI in this game. Which is understandable, but um... It still can work to your advantage sometimes. But in this case, I I feel like that I think that would have been a one-shot even if um, I didn't crit. I think that's cap speed, but it doesn't really matter. He doubles everything relevant anyway. 
And it's another witch, but we should be in a good position to stop the flood of witches soon. So now, you prepare to die. I think you better I could have given Holmes a shield to maybe bait this guy into attacking. <laughs> Such fools. Wow, even your death quote is generic. <laughs> generic to the end, Mr. Generic Dark Bishop. Like a lot of the late game. <laughs> okay, so the funny thing was when when Holmes was attacking the boss with the blessed bow and I realized that I didn't double. And yeah, here's the point where the objective changes. Holmes is like, we need to get there. So they do, like, kind of troll you. It says it's a defeat boss map, but actually there's one more condition. Reach door. But, um, yeah, I, I was thinking to myself, oh, if only Holmes had, um... Uh, if only Holmes had a dent, and I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it, and then I was like, yeah, definitely sure he doesn't have it. And then he learns it immediately after killing the boss. <laughs> Although that actually might be useful for being able to one where one wow wow without the witches. Now, I think it actually has to be Holmes who reaches that spot, too. Uh, which is a little bit annoying, and in fact, now I think about it, I promised I wouldn't warp skip this map, but I might end up just warping homes in there. You know what's annoying? I act now I actually do wish that I had the door key on, um, on Xeno, because then Leoni could run in and get rid of the witch. And I'm pretty sure she wouldn't die to the Devil Lance in ret Oh no, she has 40 HP, no, she wouldn't die. Okay, so that's, um... That's actually annoying. Because I forget if you trade, like, can you still, like... Okay, yeah, no, you can't move. Yeah. Oh, well. That was, uh, that was inefficient, but, um... I didn't realize that, that uh, both the boss and, uh, the other enemy in there would be dead by the time that I got, um... That I got Leonie over the door, so, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like I can end this uh, quickly anyway, and I don't think that witch is in a position to threaten anybody right now, especially since both the long-range magic guy, well, not long-range, both the AoE magic guys are down. So yeah, we got the three skeletons in there, and everyone else is just, uh... Oh, and Renee can heal somebody. But yeah, like, nobody is in witch one-shot range, so... I guess I'll heal Bilford. So I don't actually even know what that witch is going to try and do. Is it going to attack Holmes, maybe? I guess we'll see. Vilford hasn't really done much this chapter, but he did at least kind of do, do his part in luring the boss forward. And yeah, Samson is... I mean, I could, I could put Samson in a position to kill that guy if I wanted to, but I mean, I don't think it's really that important. So that guy gets to live and rethink his life choices. I mean, at least opening the door is going to mean that both of these guys suicide on Xeno. Who probably won't die to the witch? I'm, I'm pretty sure, it's only got 18 attack power. And these guys are not going to reduce him to 18 HP at all. They both hit him though, which is kind of impressive. I think almost, like, this will mean that pretty much every enemy is, there's like one harpy up, no that harpy is actually dead already. And you attack Samson for no apparent reason. Yeah, it's just this witch left and then the skeletons in that room who I don't need to attack and the other guy that I don't need to attack. Oh, okay, Samson doesn't one-shot you with vantage, that's a shame. I was really hoping that he did. If he gained strength in that last level up, he would have. It's. I feel like his strength is actually kind of low for this point, but it doesn't really matter that much because he's still one-rounding everything. Because, yeah, Samson is pretty great. And yeah, now I'm at the point where I can eliminate these witches before they become a threat, so, um, yeah, especially since Leon- Although I suppose I could use Leonie for a proof of concept here. Although, if I don't, I have one more chance at letting her game move. So, I guess I'll, I'll do that. 
Uh, yep, 20 times 2, this will finish the Witch. I mean, unless I don't gain 50 experience in this, but I feel like I'll probably get 50 experience from this. No, not quite, okay. But yeah, this room is officially secure now. And yep, uh, only the enemies that are in secluded rooms are um, are able to uh, well able to exist right now. So yeah, I guess like how many warp users? Yeah, I got seven. <laughs> So yeah, let's go ahead and just warp homes uh, over... I don't know if this will instantly end the map or not. It probably won't, because I think, like, usually the Lord character has to end their turn on a certain spot before the map ends. In fact, now that I think about it, I think there's actually a command for this. Yeah, the map is not over, so obviously there's a command for this. But well, this enemy phase isn't going to really matter that much. So, I mean, this map got somewhat intense at times, but, uh... I was saved by the Witch's AI being stupid. Like, I don't even know why they didn't go for Renee there. They could've... I mean, maybe they were scared of her support with Lionheart. They thought they couldn't hit her, maybe. I don't know. Come on. Oh, no move. That'll probably... Oh, I don't know if she'll get a level up in the final chapter or not, but it'll probably be her last chance to get move. Uh, but yeah, I think home has to just wait in front of the door. And yeah, that's gonna be it. So, pretty short chapter overall. I kind of like they give you a short one to prepare for the final chapter. Now, remember this though. This door won't open from this side, even to a lockpicker like Holmes. And she can hear voices. Looks like these two have arrived as well. So yeah, it turns out that Tia is the last shaman that he needs, so she probably shouldn't have come here. Our deal? Oh no, is Richard gonna live up to his name? Yep, that obvious asshole was in fact an asshole all along! I mean, it wasn't hard to see this coming. That wasn't- that's not what she said! Stop taking things out of context! Unfortunately, it turns out the man you want to marry is a traitor. And with that, Gwen Chaos has all four of them. Yes, that's not going to end badly for you at all. 
serving a dark god. And also, Gwen Chaos gave no guarantee that he wouldn't just kill you after he's done with his ritual, which is probably what's going to happen, because that's generally how it goes when you make deals with um, big bad sorcerers like this. We've been betrayed, Gwen Chaos has everything he needs to complete the ritual, and for some reason Holmes gets a completely new portrait just for being angry at seeing Katri in chains. <laughs>